Hey everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salazar, and welcome to the channel, The Art of Comics. Today, we're gonna do something a little special. We're gonna talk about my process, coloring comic books analog. That's right. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about my process, what I have done since the beginning into my current process of how I'm coloring comic books analog. I'm using very little digital. It's all kind of on paper and color. And so we're gonna go through this today. We're gonna to talk about what I do, how I do it, so maybe you can kind of just see what's uh, what I'm up to. Um, I'm the writer and colorist for a comic book graphic novel series called Pariah, Missouri. And this was three graphic novels, and this now it's been um, completed. And we're gonna go through how I color this book and what my process is. So. Uh, Let's do a deep dive. Let's go into the pages and look at how I color comics. Old school. Let's do it. Hey guys. Hey, thanks again for checking out my channel. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys who've uh, subscribed and are watching all our videos. Uh, I'm really excited about my recent videos about Heavy Metal Magazine and... Um, Love and Rockets and stuff like that. But today I want to kind of just share what I've been up to and what I do, how I do comics. You know, right now comics are, I would say, 95% all done digitally. Uh, and that's cool. That's fine. I'm not a super technophobe. But there is something nice about paper and about doing things the old school way. And uh, one of those is you get to kind of handle stuff. So I'm going to just share with you what I did and how I started doing my comics, and then we'll go from there on what I'm doing now and all that kind of stuff. So check it out if you want to learn a little bit about how to uh, color your comics. So the first thing I did, this is about page, I think this is like page four of Pariah, Missouri. So this is in the very beginning of the graphic novel series. I painted this probably seven years ago, damn. Yeah, it was around seven, it's gotta be around seven years ago. And this is Winsor Newton. So these are Winsor Newton watercolors. They come in tubes. Um, and then what I did is I created little channels and I just uh, let them dry. So this way you can kind of travel with this, which is kind of nice. You don't have to worry about the tubes. Um, but these are Winsor Newton watercolors. I felt like they were of a good quality and kind of what I wanted to use for a prime Missouri. So these are the first two pages. Now, what I did though, so for instance, this is this paper is literally um, pro white, um, not pro white, uh, blue line paper you buy, you know, probably got on Amazon. It's not that, it's not that heavy, but it actually takes the water pretty well. It will buckle a little bit, but but not that bad. So so the I feel like, and even this is even a thinner, this isn't even Bristol. This is like some kind of a paper. The trick was, how do I get the inks on here? So originally what I did was I went down to FedEx, Kinko's, every week and I would print out the Jose's, uh, who's the penciler, his final inks on paper. And sometimes what I'd have to do is clean it up because he put a lot of shading and a lot of cool um, texture to it, but I needed like black and white ink. I couldn't have any texture because watercolor wouldn't, the, the paint doesn't go over the ink well, right? So I used a laser printer at Kinko's to print these at 11 by 17, okay? And at first thing I did, I just went online and I bought some blue line paper, some like 300 or 400 weight Strathmore type of blue line. But it's even thinner than that, I think. It's not even like a 400, it's thin, maybe a 300. Um, not a huge fan of it, and it has the blue lines, but back then, I didn't even know how to digitally remove the blue line, so I had to go in digitally and clean up all the blue line stuff that would be there, which was a real pain in the neck. So that's what I did here. So um, I basically had paper 
laser printed the blacks and then on top of that I'm putting in watercolor okay I'm using a number of brushes I usually don't use the 7 series sable for watercolor because it just will eventually ruin it so I use um, I use like let me grab one of these like Chinese brushes I use like these kind of Japanese sumi type brushes um, they have a nice point I can do white stuff I'd use some like you know flat brushes things like that so I didn't go heavy on the brushes but I wanted to make sure at least I had um, this burnt sienna um, Windsor Newton color and then I got this um, cobalt blue or Windsor Newton blue something like that I think it's called uh, so that's what I did for Pry Missouri the beginning so I am watercoloring on this and then now I'm scanning this in digitally. I scan it in the computer and at the time I had a small scanner so I had to chop it up. I had to scan it on this side, flip it over, scan it on this side and then Photoshop stitch it together which was a hassle. It just makes more workflow, more steps which just takes more time. And if there's anything about art I've learned is it's all about speed and so the speed is important. I'm going to turn on another more light. I'm going to turn like right there, maybe just a little bit more light. Okay. Um, so we did that. A little bit of a slow process, but I actually can bang this out in like a couple hours, maybe even less than two hours. I could just kind of bang this out. So it's actually pretty quick. And of course, I'm only using one color, so that makes it even quicker. Uh, so that was my process for Pariah, Missouri, uh, the first book, and then kind of and so here's another example. Now, the problem with this is when you start putting down watercolor on top of the tone, the paper that has the toner does not like the watercolor. And when you scan it in, you will get these bits of paint that's on top of your blacks. So when you scan it, then you have to digitally kind of fix that. Digitally go in, re-blacken this, sometimes use your magic wand or your paint bucket and paint bucket these, these blacks to make them more black. Um, or it just, or when I, or when I printed this with the laser printer, it didn't get a nice big black. It's kind of a gray. So I just had some issues with it and I wasn't super happy with uh, this and so I learned a little bit more. But this is, this is what I did in the beginning. I watercolored on top of the blacks. And again, it's quick, but the problem is I had to go to Kinko's, drive, you know, a mile and a half over there to, to do it. And then that those printers are not happy with thick paper like this. Even the stuff like this that's not very thick, it jams all the time. So you're always getting jams. It's always getting cockamamied. And so, it, and they were like, you know a dollar to print so it was kind of a pain so that but that's what I did that for like two years <clears throat> and then uh, and then what I did was and so here's another example same thing but now I, I upgraded my paper so now I'm upgrading my paper to this is like proper like vellum you know Bristol board and if you want to know what that looks like you know you can go here to Amazon and you just get some of this stuff. Okay, Stratmore, Bristol. You can get the vellum, which has a little bit more of a tooth to it and is also smooth. So you can get it even a smoother. Um, I like the toothy vellum, but you don't have to get You can get whatever you want. I like this one a lot. Now I'm in book two of Prime Missouri a year later, kind of adding more colors. What's nice about watercolor and doing an analog is you really can play with it. Uh, you don't get do-overs, but you get to add these layers and stuff, and I, I really like the way this turned out. Again, I do have to sometimes go in here, though, and fix the blacks, uh, either with a marker. I'll go in with a marker and do it before I scan it or digitally scan it. But I'm trying to do as, as least amount of digital work as possible. I really want to kind of keep this an original art piece too, right? Which is kind of fun. You don't get to have that when you're digital. You know, digital, you can make a print. That's about all you get. Uh, but this is kind of nice to have. So I did that <clears throat> with that. And then I said, you know what? This takes a lot longer than that first page, right? This could take me about an hour and a half or so. This is taking me much longer to do. 
and I'm wondering if something I can do to f fix my speed is change the size. So what I decided to do is I evolved to another stage, which is now where I went to a smaller page, and this is fancy archer's paper. So now what I did was I decided, okay, I'm not gonna use a laser printer. I'm going to print on with an inkjet printer with Archer's paper. Now this is like a nice paper. This is nice watercolor. It is thick. It has got a lot of tooth to it. I love this paper. This is my favorite watercolor paper. It's expensive though. Notice the blacks are not blacks. They're gray. <clears throat> So what I'm doing here, and I, these are actually two of my, one of my favorite pages. Uh, I like this page a lot. What I'm doing is now digitally, when I'm preparing the file to print on my at-home inkjet, so already I don't have to go to Kinko's, I don't have to pay the Kinko's you know, dollar to get it printed, but I'm doing the inkjet. So I lower the opacity of my blacks to like you know 20%, 30%, nothing higher than 35%. So they're kind of a gray, right? And you can do this in gray, you can do it in different colors. I'll tell you about that in a second. But Okay, so I lower that down to gray, and then I print that on this paper, and I shrink it down. Now the original size of the book, you know, is this is still bigger than that. So you're still gonna reduce it, right? You're still gonna reduce it. So it's not like, you know, you're still gonna have some kind of reduction, so you'll keep some of that, you'll tighten this up a bit. Um, but it's not nearly as much, of course, as the, the massive book. So I do that, I, um, I print this out, and now I watercolor this, which turns out kind of fun. The only problem is, is that when you're watercoloring, you don't really get to look at the final view, right? In fact, you might look at this like, ah, it doesn't really look cool at all, but, when I scan this in, when I scan this in, I then can keep that original black layers and I put that in Photoshop on top of it, like an overlay, literally. So now I have my colors, then I have my black overlay in Photoshop, like an acetate of my blacks, like an animation cell. And now, boom, all these black spots of her hair and the borders and everything, pop. There is no paint over it. I don't have to fiddle fart with any of that. And then I keep these pristine colors the way they are. Notice too how much more vibrant these are than say this. And it wasn't just my palette. I actually changed the colors. Uh, I changed mediums. So instead of using the Winsor Newtons, I now moved up to a different paint, which are these Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus watercolors. So I got turned on by these at um, Emerald City Comic Con about five years ago, four years ago. Um, an artist there uses them. He was the art director for CrossGen. I wanna say his name was Anderson. Oh, what was it? Uh, put in the comments, comments below me on that. I think it's Anderson. He uses Hydrus fine art watercolor. And there's a couple different uh, Martin stuff. He uses these and I bought a big rack. They're expensive, but damn if they're not great. And I love these things. Actually, I won't open it up and screw it up. But anyway, they're super strong, light, fast, very brilliant. And these things keep color so dang well. I really, I mean, I just really like this right here. That just looks so cool. Um, it turned out great. In fact, let me just pull up this original page and pull it up here in the book and just let's take a look at it for a second. I think you'll get a you get a feeling of how I'm doing this. So don't feel like you have to do everything in Photoshop. You really can. And honestly, I think that I can be just as quick, if not quicker, digitally, excuse me, in this than I can digitally. Okay, here is the original. Here, here we go. So you can see here. <clears throat> Here is the printed paper, and this actually isn't the best paper, but um, here's the printed work. Here's my original, and I think it looks pretty pretty bad, A. Eh? I dig it a lot. And I'm not doing much at all changes digitally. Once this gets slapped in there, 
I just put the blacks over it. I might tweak the levels a little bit, change the curve slightly to amp things up, but I'm not really messing with this at all. This is pretty much the way this goes. I like that a lot too. So it's all about reducing your steps, you know? So I do as, most, as much as I can, analog, slap it in digitally, and then it's done. I don't have to screw with it. So um, I'm a fan of that. So that's another kind of thing. So I moved on and I did that. So that was Prime Missouri Volumes 1, 2, and then this was 3. So now that I'm doing this style, I got it, I'm starting my new book. Uh, where, where I'm doing the art as well. So I'm doing the pencils, the inks, the colors, everything. This is called Shangri-La Estates. This is about, this is a um, trailer park story of the 1980s in Little Rock, Arkansas. So it's Southern chicken fried story about this trailer park and all the kind of craziness is there, coming of age of this boy and his mother and all that stuff. So here, now I decided, okay, I'm gonna step it up again and I'm gonna put two to a page. I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit more. So now on one piece of 11 by 17, I can shrink it down and I get two pages. Now, I got two here for you. You can't really see this very good because you don't see the blacks, right? The blacks are gray. And so now what I'm doing is I'm just doing ink, ink wash. I'm not using colors. I'm just gonna do an ink wash. Now digitally, I might change the colors. I could just do a screen or change all this to a brown or a blue or a whatever. I won't go into individual things and change it multicolored. It's gonna be usually one, maybe two tones at the max. But I wanted to just do a neutral ink tone for the book and then play with the final look digitally. Again, I can whip these out quick. Now they're a little bit smaller, a little easier. I print two on a page. Again, it's about workflow. It's about you know being able to pump things out quicker. Uh, same thing, now here I did the blacks in gray. Then I said, you know what, let me do the blacks in blue. So now the blue, you know, non-reproduction non blue. Now I can see them a little bit better and I can see where I wanna lay down my, my tones. Here's the thing. It doesn't really matter because your blacks are gonna go exactly on top of these. It doesn't really matter what this is. This could be fuchsia, this could be uh, purple, whatever this you want it to be. It doesn't matter because your blacks are gonna go right on top of it. So it's just, you know, it doesn't matter that much. But I like blue, just a little bit easier for me to see what's going on. So this is that. Now I just started a new project too. So this is my book. Shangri-La Estates coming to you in 2020. Very excited about this graphic novel. And then I was hired to do a color job. And now I'm doing the same thing, but now I'm doing with colors, right? So here we go. Now we have the same process. I'm using, I'm not using the arches because I couldn't find arches for 11 by 17 at a price I wanted. So I went to the Stratmore uh, Bristol board paper. I'm using that and I'm, again, Two per page, opacity down to, you know, 30 or so, and then print those out on a inkjet, and then now watercolor. So I can do my, my splatter, I can do my little effects, all that kind of stuff I want. I scan this in, cut it up by the pages, slap the blacks on top of it, and it's done. And I can whip this out in, in no time flat. So now there are some digital effects right, that I might want that just watercolor doesn't work. I have a airbrush, but it's a pain in the ass to get out and then I have to clean it and it's loud. And so the airbrush is a fun tool on a Saturday, but if I'm working on a weeknight, you know, I don't wanna break that out necessarily. So instead of an airbrush, again, since time is money, I'll digitally go in and maybe put some effects. Uh, if I'm feeling really artsy fartsy, I'll blow out the airbrush and put some some stuff. So now with this, I do digitally go in. I might tweak a few more things and clean things up a little bit more for these guys. But mo but 90% of it is right here on the page. So that's it. Just a quick little video. I uh, hope I didn't speed through it too much. But just want to show you about my process, what I do, how I make comics. Analog, baby. Watercolor analog. And um, 
it's definitely a long ways from this page, but it's the same principles. And um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out my other videos I got coming up this week. And uh, have a great one. Thanks, guys. Bye.